Stretching over 2,000 football fields, the Kella Power Station is the world's largest hybrid solar hydro plant. The hydropower provides uninterrupted electricity supply at night when solar energy dips. This hybrid plant also allows its users, which are manufacturers of batteries and EVs, to meet global carbon emission requirements. The EU, for example, now requires EV battery makers to certify the carbon footprints of their batteries. And this government investment here allows Chinese companies to tick that box. The power generated from the solar hydro plant goes here. This is Suining in Sichuan, a city with a population of about 2.8 million people. And all the companies on the main street of Suining work on just one product, lithium batteries. Here, they make the cells, they make the batteries, and they also recycle the batteries. All of this happened by government design. The local government office selects the companies that complements the industrial chain they want. Those battery components made in Suining support the operations of CATL. CATL is the world's largest battery maker, supplying the likes of BYD and Tesla. CATL has a plant in neighboring city Ibin. Again, this is the result of industrial policy. Technocrats from the Investment Bureau, Electric Vehicles Bureau, and Industrial Services Bureau all sit together in one office in Ibin to ensure the supply chain goes according to plan. We hope to bring the industry and the company to the to the Further down the supply chain is Dongfang Electric, which makes wind turbines. They're based at the Chengdu Deyang Economic Development Zone, also in Sichuan. The batteries for these machines come from Suining and Yibin in Sichuan. According to Chinese media, there are another 2,800 clean energy-related companies located at the Chengdu Deyang Economic Development Zone. All of them leverage on a comprehensive network of supply chains built across neighboring cities. Sichuan is home to the largest clean energy industrial cluster in China. This is how they do industrial policy in China. From the government generating power supplies to nurturing upstream industries and connecting them with those downstream. Each development builds on the supply chains established in neighboring cities. Tabajigalushian 比如说你可以把城市群看作一个大车间那当中的基础设施高速公路高铁机场还有电信啊各种基础设施这是政府做对的地方啊他把各个城市联系起来这些全部看起来都像是一个巨大的车间流水线所以美国人在上个世纪初
So ever since 1949, China has always had an industrial policy. It's had a system uh, where its growth was to be driven by state-owned enterprises. It's moderated over time, uh, but essentially I think that remains the case uh, down to the uh, present day. China controls 70% of the processes of making solar, at least 50% of the processes of making wind turbines. They have the largest EV companies in the world, and they also control batteries. To meet climate change goals, do you think it's even possible for Western countries to de-risk from China green tech? There's a race now to try and get to a point where our uh, handle on the global climate change does not go past the irretrievable point. If we go past 2.5%, 3%, it might be that we will never be able to recover. So we need to think about that resilience. But the race is, can we do that if we're serious about de-risking and decoupling in a way that doesn't uh, uh, breach that? And I think my sense from looking at how the world has been able to manage this transition is it'll be very expensive, if not impossible. So this is an imperative for the world to actually make friends and be nice. If you want to save the planet, you cannot go on about somebody's uh, values being different from yours. Save that for some other time. Uh, we need to work together on this. The United States should do whatever it can to accelerate the transition to renewables and green energy. And the simple reality is that much of the leading technology in the world resides in China. And so if the United States wants to move forward as quickly as possible, then it will need to do so in partnership with China.